All right, good afternoon. So if you were in here earlier, there was a discussion question up on the slides that said, what does the future of the web look like in AR and VR? And that's what my team and I at Facebook think about every day. Uh, I want to talk about a key moment in the evolution of the web in VR. And this is the transition from web VR to web XR. I want to talk about what it means for the future of the web as well as for you as a developer. So let's first talk about VR. Since Gear VR, you've been able to build on the web as one of the platforms for our devices. And we believe that the web is an essential part of the experience in VR, because it's been an essential part of every new digital device, from the dot-com boom that fueled PCs, to you browse on your mobile smartphone every day, to laptops that only run a browser, to smart TVs that run media applications that are based on web technologies. It's not surprising that the web is actually a core part of the VR experience as well. Oculus Browser is the built-in browser on all of our standalone VR devices. Uh, and it has been and continues to be one of the most popular apps on our platform. In fact, with each new standalone VR device, usage of Oculus Browser has increased. On Quest, over two-thirds of people use Oculus Browser. And they're not just browsing a little bit. With the near infinite amount of content on the web, they've spent a lot of time in the browser as well. They browse Facebook, they check YouTube videos, or the latest headlines, or they read up on an experience they might buy from the Oculus store. But they don't just want the web as they know it, right? You, you, don't, you, want, you just bought this awesome new piece of hardware. You want the web to be reimagined and take advantage of that device. And that's where WebVR comes in. And people are spending a lot of time in WebVR experiences in the browser as well. In fact, with each new standalone VR device that we've introduced, the engagement on immersive experiences that we feature in Oculus Browser has increased. So it's all on the rise. And that's why we build our own browser, Oculus Browser. So it's optimized with Chromium as the engine, because as a web developer, you'll know it has all the latest standards, performance, and security. But we optimize it for our hardware so that it has higher frame rate uh, and that it has a comfortable and safe experience and has crystal clear visuals. We invest in the platform so that we can move standards like WebXR and WebGL forward and bring in a new generation of the web. And because media is a core part of what people do on the web and VR, we enhance that experience as well to support 3D photos, 360 videos, and more. When Quest launched just a few months ago, we redesigned the browser completely, including, at the center of that experience, the new tab page. The new tab page is a way to, get, uh, to discover rich, immersive content from the web. The web is vast, and the VR web is still growing. We want to help you discover content from the VR web. So anytime you create a new tab in the browser, you see an experience that looks like this. There's shortcuts right up top to some of the most popular websites on the internet. But we also recommend VR experiences from developers like you. And I'll talk a little bit later about how you can get featured in this content. We bring in immersive media from Facebook. So you can discover a creator to follow or a group to join. And you can make it more personal if you link your Facebook account to Oculus. And we'll show you immersive media from your friends and family. All of these great experiences that we feature today are built with an early experimental API called WebVR. WebVR combined with WebGL and the GamePad API give you basic access to render stereoscopic content on a headset and get access to VR controllers like Oculus Touch. And it's the web, so these experiences run across devices, across browsers, and they progressively enhance based on the device they're running on, whether that's a touchscreen smartphone, or a 3 off Oculus Go, or a 6 off Oculus Quest, or AR glasses beyond. After learning from some of those great experiences that were built with that experimental WebVR API, there's a new standard coming along called WebXR. And we're excited to announce our support for WebXR coming in Oculus Browser in the, uh, in the coming months. This is the standard that will actually replace WebVR and provide a foundation for, for the next generation of, immer of immersive experiences on the web. So let's take a deeper look at WebXR. WebXR improves on WebVR in a few different ways. 
First, it has better support for six degrees of freedom tracking and varied tracking spaces. It also has a purpose-built API for VR controllers. So you can do things like tell a left controller from a right controller and better track them in six degrees of freedom. But most importantly, it provides this foundation that can support other types of realities, including augmented reality and mixed reality, using similar code just like uh, we saw before. And we imagine that as AR glasses and other devices come online, the web will be a crucial, uh, play a crucial role in those experiences, just like they have in VR. And WebXR is poised to allow you to do just that. So what's it look like as a developer if you got to move from WebVR to WebXR? If you've been building on WebVR, you'll need to do this migration. Uh, but the good news is, is that most major frameworks actually already support WebXR. Like 3.js and Babylon.js have support today. And we expect that A-Frame and React 360 are coming soon. You can actually test today using an experimental version of WebXR and Oculus Browser. If you go to about colon flags, you can enable an experiment and try it out. Now, this is an earlier version of the API, and there will be some changes before it ships on by default. So keep testing and pay attention to uh, our developer documentation. And most importantly, understand that browsers across the industry will be removing support for WebVR as WebXR comes online. So now's a good time to start thinking about this migration if you're already building on WebVR. And don't just take my word for it. Let's hear from a real-world developer building on WebXR. Please welcome Brian Pierce from Mozilla, who's building one of the most advanced WebXR sites to date, Mozilla Hubs. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, as Jacob mentioned, I'm an engineer working on Hubs, which is a social VR app that runs entirely in your browser. When you visit Hubs on the web, uh, you can create a room immediately, choose from a set of scenes, and um, within a few clicks, you'll find yourself in a virtual space. Hubs includes tools that allow you to search the web for content like images, videos, and, uh, and 3D models, as well as tools for drawing in 3D space, um, taking pictures and videos inside the room, and also for sharing your screen uh, or your camera into the room as well. In addition to creating rooms, you can also create scenes themselves. Uh, most of the scenes that you can choose from today were actually created by uh, some of our users. Um, and they use Spoke, which is our scene creation tool, uh, which is also web-based. Uh, of course, once, once you've created a room, you can invite people to the room uh, just by sharing the room's URL with them. And they can join um, on their own device, whether that's a phone, a laptop, or a PC, or a VR headset. As you can imagine, uh, because Hubs is just another modern web VR application or web application, um, it basically adapts itself uh, to whatever device it's running on to take advantage of the, that device's capabilities um, and, and best suit its uh, particular interface. Uh, so I can talk a lot more about Hubs and its features, but we're here to talk about WebXR and what it takes to migrate from web VR to this newer spec. And I'll use Hubs as an example uh, to go through that. So Hubs is built on top of uh, 3.js and A-Frame. Uh, these libraries uh, provide convenient abstractions on top of WebGL and other browser APIs to make it easier to develop apps. Um, when it comes to Hubs, we use A-Frame to build the world and the behaviors in the application. And we use 3.js to take care of uh, rendering that world into your headset or, or onto your device. Uh, all three of these components, Hubs, A-Frame, and 3.js, also talk to the WebVR or Web, WebXR um, APIs directly uh, for reasons I'll go into shortly. So as Jacob mentioned, uh, the 3.js library has already been updated to support WebXR. Um, and we use, these, uh, we use 3.js to, to render the scene into, into your headset. Um, 3.js has recently been, been updated about, uh, about May of this year. They released version 105. Uh, which includes support for both APIs, but you'll want to include, we, you, you'd want to upgrade to the very latest version, revision 108 or above, uh, to take advantage of bug fixes and, and, and uh, performance improvements. 
including A-Frame into the mix is, um, it complicates things a bit because A-Frame also interacts with the Web, WebXR APIs. Um, the current version of A-Frame doesn't actually support the very latest version of the WebXR spec, but the development branch has actually been updated as of last week. So you can expect uh, the next version of A-Frame uh, should, should support WebXR proper. Um, if you're familiar with, with A-Frame, you might know that it includes the WebVR polyfill library, uh, which was designed to allow you to use the WebVR APIs uh, on browsers and devices that didn't support the API natively. Um, but if you're not using A-Frame or you're using 3.js um, or, or, or another WebGL library, you might want to take advantage of the WebXR polyfill, which is a newer version of that library uh, that allows you to support a broader set of devices uh, with a unified API. And I mentioned 3.js. Uh, 3.js also includes examples uh, that allows you to, um, to, to, to take care of sort of the device uh, capability checks, the API avail availability checks, uh, so you don't have to worry about that part of it. And it also pro provides hooks, um, 3.js provides hooks that, that allows you to um, use track controllers in your application. Um, so, so Hubs use, uses both of these libraries, but it also can communicates with the WebXR and WebVR APIs directly. And the reason we do that is because we wanted more fine-grained fine control about um, fine grain control with, with, uh, when it comes to the, the user experience, when it comes to the entry flow, uh, device selection, and uh, we also implemented our own custom input system, uh, which allows you to take hardware input and translate them to user actions inside the application. So if you're building more of a sophisticated application, you might have to interact with the, uh, with the API directly as well uh, to, to have that fine grain, grain control. Uh, the fortunate thing is that the, the WebXR API is relatively simple to, simple to use. It, it's sort of a one-to-one -one mapping between the Web, Web VR API and the XR APIs. Um, so it's relatively straightforward to, to migrate. Um, I would encourage you to check, take a look at the spec itself. It's, it's quite readable. Uh, but the 3.js source code is also a useful guide because it has concrete implementations of how you would use both APIs. Um, and, and, and the, the WebXR manager and WebVR manager classes in, in particular in the library uh, are good comparisons between the two APIs. Uh, so this sh slide shows you sort of the, a general overview of the, the differences between the APIs. In general, basically, you, uh, you deal with, um, instead of dealing with displays and devices directly, uh, you start off by, by requesting or uh, checking for support for an XR session, and the rest of the, the API falls off this session. So the Hubs team is really excited about WebXR. Um, one of our goals with Hubs was to push the envelope of what's possible on, uh, on the web with, with, VR, with, with VR, and um, um, the WebXR spec certainly helps us achieve that mission because it gives us access to uh, to a large number of uh, devices and platforms. And um, as it continu continues to mature into uh, a true W3C standard, it means that we'll have ensured support for future VR devices and AR devices as well. Um, the, the, the future of XR is looking pretty bright, considering that you know, we have Oculus Browser and Firefox already implementing uh, the Web VR API, and we were really grateful that the Oculus Browser team cared enough to actually uh, implement that device, uh, that, that API at an early stage, and it's great to see them transition to WebXR as well. Uh, so the, we expect a lot more people to be using WebXR in the future as other browsers come online, including Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge uh, throughout the next few months and years. Um, and the future is looking pretty bright. So I'll hand it back to Jacob to talk about uh, getting started. Thanks, Brian. OK, so how do you get started? We want to cultivate a rich and vibrant ecosystem around WebXR. And to do that, we need to give you all the tools and resources to be successful as a developer. So today, we're launching oculusweb.fb.com which is a new site that, has, that showcases experiences from partners so you can be inspired about how to push the envelope like Hubs is doing, uh, to documentation, resources, and tools uh, that you need as a developer. 
We'll get you to all the right frameworks uh, that you can build on that make your life easier as a developer. And we'll teach you about how to make sure that your experiences are compatible in Oculus Browser as it's distributed to users on our platform. And we'll help you get discovered uh, in, in the vast sea of the web. Uh, and I talked earlier about getting featured on the new tab page of the Oculus Browser. If you want to do that, you can submit your project at oculusweb.fb.com slash submit. Give us a, a, an image of your experience. Tell us a little bit about it, how to get in touch with you. And we'll select experiences that we think Oculus users will enjoy and feature it right in the browser. Now's a good time to start thinking about updating your frameworks uh, uh, and your plan for the migration to WebXR. And to do that, make sure you head over to oculusweb.fb.com for more. And we'll talk about our plans for WebVR and WebXR and the future that lies beyond that. So thank you. I hope that you enjoy the rest of OC6. If you have lots of great questions for Brian or myself, we will be at the Speakers Pavilion, which is out of the demo hall and down to the right for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, we're excited about the future of WebXR, and we're really happy to see what we build together. Thank you.